Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. As born Allah wa Nima al Wakil. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? And here though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Asalaamu As Alaikum. It's Monday. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. A big, big, big 50th happy birthday to Dr. Imanon Ni Amataki. Yesterday was a swell party. I enjoyed myself. Six two should have been there. He was busy reading his books. But over the weekend, I kept thinking about the outside broadcast that we had at Tetogu. Popularly known as Tetegu. And I was looking, I went around the town looking at the infrastructure that they had, and I was looking at the caliber of people who lived there, and I was looking at the a kind of excuses that were being made, particularly to the point where we invited the assembly. The assembly didn't turn up. The MC didn't turn up. He didn't send a representative as well. Nadmo was there. Kudos to them. Uh, Ghana Water Company, Stanley Mati and his team were there. Kudos to them. The police were there. The community people were there. The technical development committee were there. Uh, the chiefs were there, the elders and the citizens themselves were there. But the people who come to take their taxes and their contributions day by day, month on month, week on week, yearly, half yearly, quarterly, whatever it is, they were not there. And while we were there, we called the MCE six times. It didn't pick up. And for me, for a moment, when the people started venting, I said, well, you have a genuine case. Because the argument has been made that a place like Tetegu is not supposed to be habitable. That's a good argument to make on the face value. But then, if the place is not supposed to be habitable, why the hell do you take water there? Why the hell do you go and give them electricity? Why the hell do you give them permit to build? You have given them electricity all the way to the, to the, to the, very, to the very last point. You have given them water supply all the way to the very last point. You have given some of them permits to build. One of the things that I saw was that also people were filling the banks of the river to build. And that when it is the dry season, when the river has shrunk to its original size, people now go and sell those lands and then start building upon them. Not more people told me this. They know it. So I asked them, why don't you run a ship system so that you can stop this? Because people genuinely have bought lands there, and people's stupidity must not affect their, their humility. We will get into some more Tetegu matters. And, and you know, I'm speaking about Tetegu because it is not the only place. If you go to Katana, Ketu South, you go to the Anglonga area, you see the people are sitting in water. Over the weekend, the Salaga area. So just play the video for me. Just put the video up. The Salaga area. Regions have been cut apart, one cut from each other, because, because the bridge has been washed away. And we knew that it was going to happen. We always knew that it was going to happen. People complain about it. People have complained. Yesterday, after the party, I dropped off somebody. And the person said, oh, I just got back from Wa. Our bus was the last one that crossed the bridge. So the people who now had to come through, had to either go through the Tamale, a very long stretch and all of that. What is all this? The bridge at Tetegu, very, very soon, if God doesn't intervene, we will get to a situation like this. Because when you're on the bridge, it actually shakes. This is it. Our brothers and sisters up now. You see them standing there. They have been cut apart. So what it means is that this will affect food. This will affect their livelihood. This will affect their income. This will affect nearly every single thing. And it's, it, it, it looks like the narrative is one and the same each time it rains. This one is not the fault of the citizens. 
And I have a few friends, each time you talk about the national issue, they say, oh, yes, the citizens, the citizens, talk to the citizens today, today must change. I agree, the citizens must change their lives. But how does the citizens' change in their lifestyle affect the bridge being washed away? The bridge that has been washed away, which the people have complained about over and over again. How does the citizens change their life? I mean, this, this kind of investment is beyond the citizens. We know it. Anyway. Please play me Sarah Ajua Safo's video. Sarah Ajua Safo, MP for Dom Kwabenya, former minister for gender, children, and social protection, former minister for procurement, and former deputy majority leader in the parliament of the Republic of Ghana. Sarah Ajua Safo, daughter of Apostle Kodio Safo, who was homeschooled, who is also a lawyer. Please play me her video. <laughs> The new patriotic party, any party in Penin for the kind Mantenina and the Dunker Kufuadu, the teacher, the vice president, the mommy, the chief of staff, honorable Frema Osei Opari, majority leader, and the entire leadership of parliament, Mimiano and Rasha Bigger for majority purpose. the regional executive, Peter Akra, the constituency executive, our chairman, Bonsi Eka Anu, the headquarters of New Patriotic Party, the general secretary, and the national chairman, and the people who are supporters, sympathizers, and the people who are supporters, and the people who are supporters, and the people who are you know when i saw this the thing that came into my mind was how the children do their recitals when they are graduating from K is it nursery two eh? or KG one and two? My name is Sarah Joasafo. I am five years old. That, I, when I saw it, that's what I thought. I thought this was another recital. Madam, you see, I advocate for young people here to be given an opportunity to serve. I agree with Honorable Kennedy the Japan. You have failed. And the insulting part is that you are only thanking your party people, national executive, you are still speaking Lafa. So we want to take this opportunity to forgive you. You are still speaking Lafa in this heat. We gave you an opportunity. We gave you an opportunity to be a cabinet minister. Do you know the weight of that? We gave you an opportunity to be a member of parliament. You know the weight of that. We gave you an opportunity to be a deputy majority leader. Do you know the weight of that? Do you know how many people were in the queue? And then you messed it all up. And then you decided that you were only going to say sorry to your party people because the primaries is coming and you want to come and stand again for re-election. You are just like all the other MPs who don't respect Ghanaians, who talk anyhow to Ghanaians, but when it is re-election, they have Krama and Hubras. Yeah, that's what you're doing. By all means, choose your family first, because family is everything, it's important. But do you honestly think that you give us the value of what we're looking for? And for all that time that you were out of office, 
If you had any dignity at all, you'd have returned the monies that you took in the name of salary. Your co-cabinet minister, the education minister, is busy chasing sectag people to say their salaries for August alone should be frozen because they went on strike. You took a, you went a war. You were dancing on TikTok. Play the TikTok video for me. You were busy dancing on TikTok. You were dancing. On, why are you not dancing to say apo the ap apology? You should be dancing to say the apology. You were dancing busily on TikTok when, when children were being sodomized in this country. 19 boys were sodomized in this country. You were choosing your family. I agree. As a cabinet minister, they put a lot of weight on you. In any serious country, you would have been impeached a long time ago. Ajwa, in any serious See, but we are not a serious country, so that is how come you can run away, come back, and the president sat and watched you. Under you, under you, procurement breaches that happened when you were procurement minister, ABAJ and the rest. Under you, you still had the second chance. And your baby papa says that it is because you are not given the opportunity to be major, my majority, deputy majority leader, so you got angry. There's perhaps a backstory. What happened between you and Mrs. Kwashigam on the school feeding front, where you wrote and said you had sacked Mrs. Kwashigam, and then you came to write back to say it was an administrative error. Now, today we are all speaking slangs. You have failed the young people of this country. And if there are any young women who will be considered for positions, you are one of the reasons they will not be considered for positions. You are busy dancing on TikTok. You were not present in parliament to serve the people of Dom Kwabinya. Today, with the benefit of hindsight, and you want to even be remorseful, if it, there's any truth to it at all, you decide to only apologize to your party people as if all the people in Dom Kwabinya are only MPP people. And those of them who might even be NDC, CPP, whatever PPP, they decided, those who decided to vote for you and still respect and support and honor you as their member of parliament, what happens to them? What happens to them? Show me the video. Now, we will take the apology with a pinch of salt. But there was an allegation of impersonation against you. Somebody who impersonated you in parliament. Put the picture up. You have to come and tell us whether it was you or it was not you. Whether there was a real impersonator in the House of Parliament on your behalf while you were supposed to be away. You have to come and tell us. It is not enough to come and apologize. I read on social media, people say, oh, she has apologized, so let the sleeping dog like, leave it alone. That shows maturity. Uh, they're there maturity. A dear maturity. Play the video of the boy who was sodomized, one of the 19 boys. Play the video for me. To do it three times. To do it to me three times. To, he said, if I say it, he will beat you. And if he came, and I stopped going to him, if he came to class, he will give us a slide down, we, we cannot answer it. This is one of the boys who was sodomized by his social studies teacher, Natoma Otabel. I took the fight on my own on Johnny's Bite when I was on TV3. Ajoa Safo, you were there as a cabinet minister because the president, whether he was afraid, shy of you, or with the relationship he had with your father, with you, or whatever it is, he, he couldn't sack you. 19 boys, they were sodomized by their, if for, if for those of you who don't know what sodomy is, 19 boys, their social studies teacher, male teacher, had sex with male students, their male pupils, 19 of them in this country. The Ministry of Gender took them forever because there was no minister until they brought caretaker Minister Cecilia Abinadapa, whose money was found under her bed recently. If we had a president who knew his beans and knew what he was about, both of them would have been sacked a long time ago. But keeping one there and also endorsing that I know you come out free, we know, we know that the president is not equally serious like the people he appointed because he, he gets the kind of people he's giving us. 
19 of them were sodomized. So those 19 boys, they didn't have families. Those 19 boys, their families were not going through anything. Those 19 boys are going to live with the horror of their social studies teacher putting his whatever be at the, in their behind. 19 of them. You come and say you are sorry. Now, they, they said they gave you get fee. Play the video for me. They said they gave you get fee. Play the video for me. Canada, Japan. Said they gave you get fee. Play the video for me. And Dr. Mwakuba, listen to me here. I don't like people like that, honestly. I have vowed not to insult. Can never blast it here. I grass up. I grass up. Chief of staff called me. I went there. Said, now nah, this is what she's saying. I swear my mother's grief. Chief of staff gave me 120,000. Deposited in a Joseph's and Fidelity Bank account. Please, I'm Wakuba. What do you know? So it, ah, a lot had 124,000 of our money. The task school children, they don't have 97 pesos to pay their caterers to feed them under your ministry. You left all the women, you left all the gender issues, you left all the children. 124,000, you have to come and tell us whether the money was in your Fidelity Bank account, what you used it for, what it was meant for, whether you have returned the money before we take your apology with a pinch of salt. If there's an item of shame, you wouldn't even show your face. You would pack your things and leave that parliamentary office if I were you. But there's no shame. Are you happy with yourself? That as a young person who was given an opportunity to serve, this is how you decided to serve your people because you were not happy with certain happenings within your party because you wanted something that you didn't get. You are behaving like some senior police officer who appeared before a committee of parliament. It's a shame. What is the motivation for other young girls, other women? You, have, you are supposed to have held the door open for them. You have banged the door once you went through it. That's selfishness and greed. That's selfishness. And whoever I told you to come and do the video and even restrict it to your party people did you no good. High proper PR people. Not boot leakers who say, Honorable Yomo Yomo. Go and sit somewhere. Go and find somewhere and sit. Good morning. Let me two questions.